Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're talking about Keepers. This is designed by AJ Porfirio, and it is published by Van Ryder Games. When I first heard this title, I was like, Keepers? What are we keeping? Just trying to figure out like what we are keeping. Well, I know what we're keeping now. Pictures. We're, pictures. Photos. These photography, these, these photos, photographers. We're not keeping photographers. No, that's <laughs> illegal. Are, that's called kidnapping. <laughs> we are keeping... <laughs> Pictures that specifically one photographer has taken. Yes. <laughs> so what you're doing is it's a party style game. So one person's going to give out a word or a clue. Everyone else is going to throw cards in the mix uh, that they think is going to match or not match that clue the best. They're going to shuffle them up, reveal them. We're going to vote on who did the best or the worst. And uh, people are going to get points based off of the keepers that they put out there. <laughs> Let me show you how to play. All right, here is our setup for keepers. Basically, we have our large mat here. All the spots are numbered one through eight. This plays up to eight players. Each spot is reserved for a submission from each one of the players. So we've got a large stack of cards here. We're gonna shuffle those up, and then each player is gonna get dealt a hand of eight cards. So we've got these eight cards. These are basically all this gorgeous uh, natural photography, landscapes, animals, all that kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do when it's our turn is we are going to look through our cards, and we are going to pick out a card that we like, and we're gonna come up with an adjective for it. We're it doesn't have to be an adjective necessarily, but it's basically a non-noun. So we couldn't say tree for this one, but we could say something like tall. So what we're going to do is we're going to say tall, and then we're going to submit our card face down. All the other players are going to look at their hands, and they're going to find cards that they think are also tall, and they're going to put them in the middle there. We're going to shuffle all these up, and then we're going to reveal them on the board. Every player also has one of these dials that basically has a green set of series of numbers as well as a red series of numbers. So what you're going to do is you are going to look out on the board and you're going to find whatever you think is the best example of tall or whatever the word was given. And you're going to vote for that with your green number. Or if you instead what you want to do is you can look out on the board and you can say whichever one you think is the worst example of tall and you can put that number in the red. Once everyone has locked in their votes, what they're going to do is they're going to, everyone's going to flip over simultaneously, and then they're going to put their votes out there. All right, so if someone says that number two is not very tall, someone says that number one, which is ours, is fantastic. So we have one over here that says number six. We've got another one for another vote for number five. All right, we've got a negative vote for negative number three. And then we've got a tiebreaker over here for a positive one. One thing to mention is you cannot vote for your own card. But now that we're looking at over here what the different votes are, number one has the majority of the positive votes. So that person is going to keep their card as a keeper. All the keepers are considered points. But also we're going to award points based off of whoever had the worst card in that category. In this case, we have two submissions that both have one vote each. Ties go to both players. So both players who voted put number two and number three in, they'd also get to keep their cards as keepers and therefore points. The players who played cards four, five, and six did not get enough votes either in the positive or in the negative, so they're not gonna get any of their cards back as keepers. Those cards will simply be discarded. If we're playing a game with five to eight players, we're gonna play as many rounds so that every player gets a chance to be the starting player once. If we're playing from three to four players, and we're gonna play until every player's been the starting player twice. And then also when you're playing with three or four players, what you're going to do is every player is going to get two cards that they get to submit into the middle, as well as they get two votes. But again, remember, you can never vote for your own cards that you submitted. Based off the number of players, once all the rounds are completed, whoever has the most amount of keeper cards is declared the winner. There's kind of a fun tiebreaker. If there's ever a tie for the most keeper cards at the end of the game, take all the keepers from all the players, shuffle them together, then deal three each to the tied players only. Each player is going to choose one of them uh, to use in the final round, and they're shuffled together face down. There is no word declared. All players, besides the tied players, vote for the favorite picture. If there's a tie again, repeat this process until there's no longer a tie. So basically, you just which image do you like the best? And it's not hard to find one that you like in this set of cards. It was so cool to see that you could also negative vote. You could negative vote on people to be like, no, I know that you said cute, and this is not cute this is whatsoever. Cute. <laughs> this is not cute. And I just really like, like the first time that that happened, it seemed really silly, right? But then there's a huge strategy behind it of trying to do the opposite of what of what somebody was saying and trying to get something else out there. I'm like, this is such a cool little mechanism where you can just negative vote on people. But then people try to do that, and then you're like, you're like, you're doing I mean, that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought this game basically had an overall the a great 
component quality. Uh, so starting with like the mat itself, what a great player mat. Yeah. And then you have these really nice dials, that really nice poker chip. And then, you know what, the cards to top it off. These big, nice cards to showcase. Uh, uh, the, the photographer's name is Byron Giorgiori, I believe. Oh my gosh, every photo all of this of game stuff. is all yeah. from, from Byron, and it is it's just gorgeous photos, all this nature, all this landscapes, all this, this beautiful uh, nature photography, which we like that kind of thing anyways, yeah. and so just yeah. like playing with those was just great, and the fact that they were all these big, nice cards, it just made it really pop off the table, um, so over component quality and components, you know, visually, just everything worked for me in this game. And our kids. Oh my gosh, our kids picked up on this immediately. So there's no there's no um, words in the game, right? So you can just play it. And our five-year-old caught on right away. She actually was one of the first people. She had to give the clue, I think, on the second turn, maybe. And she understood that. Yeah, I, I didn't even teach her. I had never taught her what a noun was up to yeah. that point. I had to teach her what a noun was and say, you can't use a noun. Yeah. And then she had like a great adjective or something right out she of the did. gate. She did. It was cute. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. It was perfect. <laughs> She, because it was really funny because she's looking at her hand the first time. She's just going, aww, aww. And we're like, hey, you have to give one. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still really cool that we were able to play that. And it's not it's not pitched as a family game, right? It's or not a kid's like, game specifically. Yeah, it's not pitched as a, as a kid's game. But the fact that we were able to play it with our, um, with our five-year-old and our nine-year-old and for it to be an enjoyable experience, it's really cool. And, and even after that, after we were done playing it, and Ryan and I needed to move on to other things. The girls wanted to play it just by themselves. They like created a two player version of the game that they could just play because they really loved the photography in it so much. They loved looking at all that stuff and trying to guess and, and intentionally trying to guess wrong too. Like they liked that aspect of it. Yeah, this is kind of a weird game for me to review. Um, for me, mechanically, it did very little fresh new things. Yeah. This is a game that we've seen before. We've played yes. uh, a you've seen before. This is a game yeah. that you've seen before. We've played a hundred different versions of of this game. Um, and to me, that's not very special at that point. But at the same time, when we played this, I, I had a smile on my face the entire time. Yeah. I had a great time playing this. It was that whole big, I guess we'll call it a genre of game. It's like the you know, giving a word clue and then giving, you know, everyone submitting cards that match that clue. That's yeah. just a whole genre of games. And then they're all very, very similar. But... This is the one that I've enjoyed the most out of all of them. And not that I gravitate towards those games anyways. It's usually party style games yeah. and things like that. But man, this was just so captivating. And it was so, you know, it was so clear and so clean, visually breathtaking. Yeah. Um, the fact that you're just, it's you know subjective, but there's no there's no words, there's no uh, some of those games kind of uh, deteriorate into you know either politics or into naughty stuff that's not family appropriate, right? This was just was just just stunning visuals combined with, you know, uh, an adjective that you could, or uh, whatever word you wanted to throw in there that, that just uh, brought everybody together, I guess. It was yeah. a, a great family entry into that line, that genre of games. That This is going to be my favorite of that style of game. I'll play anytime someone is like, let's play apples to apples. I'm like, hold what on. About, what about keepers? You heard of keepers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? I think one of the cool things about that, specifically the fact that it's a, is a, the visual aspect of it, is that... So many of those games that have the visual component have extremely abstract art, which is cool and it's fun to see that and try to, you know, get things out of that. But the fact that this wasn't abstract art and the fact that this was natural world photography, I just thought brought a different level to it. It, it made it different and, and that made it unique. That was what our daughters loved about this. It wasn't the abstractness of it. It was the beautiful photography that they were able to enjoy to see all the different things that they can see around the world and knowing that's that's there. So that's what I liked about it. That's why I gravitated towards this was that sometimes that abstract um, art is cool, but it can almost be like too vague. Too vague. We played a game recently much. where like one of those kind of abstract cards was like it's supposed to differentiate between these different clues. And like I found like it was, connections to all the clues yeah. in this one card. It was so weird. Yeah, but that did this game didn't have it. So keepers was definitely a keeper. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> nice <us>. pun. <laughs> We're. <laughs> funny <laughs> or something everybody thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to see our videos as they come out until then you can follow us in all of these places yes thanks for watching and we will see you next time bye, bye.